Hey designers, welcome to part three of my intro to instructional design series. In part one, we give you a quick definition of what instructional design is. In part two, we talked about systems and models. We talked about Addie and Sam in particular. In this section, part three, we're going to talk about how do people learn. If you're going to be systematic about designing a learning experience for a particular group of learners, it's really important to, you know, Think about how they learn as you are building that out. So let's dive in. So first off, I got a book recommendation. If you're new to instructional design, this is the most wonderful book. You'll see it recommended all the time. Julie Dirksen is fantastic. She wrote this wonderful primer on how people learn. It's chock full of humor and illustrations. It's really approachable. Highly recommend it. Check to see if your local library has it. If they don't, it's fairly inexpensive on Amazon and you will love this book. It's fantastic. So let's move on. First thing I got to share with you, and I just have to share this with you, learning styles are a myth. I'm talking about, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I learn best by doing something. I'm a visual learner. I learn best by looking at things. This is a myth. Overall, each human brain learns pretty much the same as any other human brain, disabilities aside, of course. That said, learning preferences are real. Learning styles have been debunked over and over. Learning preferences are real. And of course, if you have a disability, I mean, forget about all this, there's gonna be particular ways in which you learn best. People do have preferences on how they learn. If you're just taking in static content, maybe prefer listening to a podcast over reading an article, that's a learning preference, that's totally fine. And that's gonna change you know, from day to day depending on what you're doing or maybe what the topic is that you are tackling. So learning styles are not real, learning preferences are real, and let's move on from there. All right, again, experiences might be shaped by preferences as well as disabilities. Of course, if you have a disability, there's gonna be some ways you are physically can learn better than others. But the instruction, again, should depend on what is being taught. I mean, if you're teaching someone math, they have to do math, right? You can't just show them a whole bunch of problems on board and then on a board and then they're going to be magically capable of working through these problems on their own. They actually have to sit down, work through the math problems, get them wrong, figure out how to do it right. Um, and that's, you know, kinesthetic, sure, but that's not a learning style. That's like dependent on the subject that's being taught and how it's best to learn it. So how people learn really comes down to your learners being active and engaged, okay? All learning happens by the learner actually doing something, even just thinking really hard on a given subject or a given topic. The learner has to be active and engaged. If they're not motivated, if they're checked out, uh, they're not going to be active engaged and they're not going to be learning. And feedback, of course, is really critical to the learning process. If your learner is learning something new, they need to figure out if they have it right or not in their own minds, if they're doing it right or not. So it's really important that they try out what they know, they get feedback on their own understanding of a new topic, and they can use that feedback to correct misunderstandings, to move closer to a better understanding. This is where facilitation comes into play, right? You can't learn something for someone. You can only facilitate their learning process. So feedback is really critical to the learning process to avoid misunderstandings and to make sure someone, make sure someone has the best possible understanding of the topic. Instructional design tends to focus on adults. You can use instructional design for any group of learners, including kids, of course. Uh, but as a whole, instructional design tends to be more corporate, tends to focus more on adults. And if you're teaching adults, it's really important to think about motivation in particular because adults check out really easily, right? You have to keep adults motivated because they're going to say, why does this matter to me? You know, I have a life, I got a family, I got a job, I don't have a lot of time. It's really important that this needs to matter to me because adults are more self-directed. They have more control over their own learning. Usually they're opting into a learning experience, whether it's getting a college degree, going to graduate school, doing professional development related to their careers. Adults are gonna be more self-directed and it's really important to keep them motivated. So keep that in mind if you are teaching adults, you have to make sure that you are tying it into their lived experience and giving them the why behind it. Kids, I mean, they go to elementary school, you make connections to the real world, which is really helpful, but there's less, you know, self-direction. Uh, there's less need to motivate them to tie it into lived experiences. But adults, it's really important. So that brings us to learning theories. 
This text pictured on screen here, Foundations of Learning and Social Design Technology, this is an open book. You can find it for free online if you just do a search for that title, or you can go to edtechbooks.org. Uh, this is a wonderful resource for getting more in depth into learning theories if that's a thing that you want to do. Learning theories are science, okay? Learning theories are explanations for how people learn, and they are a source of verified strategies, tactics, and techniques, okay? Learning theories are explanations that people learn that provide the foundation for intelligent and reason strategy selection. So we'll get deeper into learning theories in the next video, but keep in mind, learning theories are explanations for how people learn based in science, based on studies of people deeply rooted in the field of educational psychology, and we use learning theories to choose strategies, to choose the method by which we want to facilitate someone's learning. It's important to have a deep knowledge of learning theories and to have a deep repertoire to draw upon when doing design, but we'll get started here with what I call the big three theories. We'll actually cover these in the next video, and we're going to cover behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. With, whenever you're new to instructional design, these are the main three you usually see. They are a really nice place to get started with learning theories, thinking about them, understanding them, learning how to use them, and many learning theories will actually draw upon these to take their own perspective on it. So we'll get started with that in the next video, which will be part four of my intro to instructional design series, the big three learning theories. So be sure to come back for that.